Solving quadratic equations by graphing and factoring. Our objective is to solve quadratic equations by graphing or factoring, as well as determine a quadratic function from its roots. Why learn this? You can use quadratic functions to model the height of a football, baseball, or soccer ball. Vocabulary to know. The zero of a function is a value of the input x that makes the output f of x equal zero. So when you input a value in for x, you get an output of zero, meaning it's going to lie on the x-axis. The root or roots of an equation are the values of the variable that make the equation true. A binomial is an expression with two terms, and a trinomial is an expression with three terms. Let's start by finding zeros by using a graph or a table. So for this one, we're going to do a graph and a table so you can see both. We have x squared plus 2x minus 3. So from our previous section, we learned that we can graph by finding our vertex and our y-intercept. So let's start with our vertex. So we have the opposite of b divided by 2 times a. And in the end, that gives us negative 1. That's our x value. To find our output or y value, we're going to substitute that back in. So we have negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. And that gives us a value of negative 4. So our vertex is at negative 1, negative 4. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 negative 4. There's our vertex. Now our y-intercept is at negative 3 and it's going to follow a, sim a similar pattern to our parent function. It's just going to have moved left and down. So we go up 1 over 1 and then we're going to go up 4 over 2 from the vertex to follow that pattern. So now we have a graph of our function and that gave us our zeros, which happened to be negative 3 and 1. Well, you can also use a table to figure this out. So we have our x values, or our input values, and then we have our output values, or y values. You can also think of this as your f of x. So we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. Well, our vertex was at negative 1, negative 4. You can also plug each of these values in. So if we plug in negative 3, we end up with 0. If we plug in negative 2, we end up with negative 3, 0, negative 3, and 1 is 0. And if you notice, we still have our 0 values being negative 3 and 1. Let's look at the zero product property. If the product of two quantities equals zero, at least one of the quantities equals zero. So three times zero or zero times four, you're going to get zero. One of them has to be zero for this to work, or at least one of them. We're going to use this product property to help us find zeros by factoring. We can rewrite this, since we're trying to find zeros, as x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. So to factor, you're going to have to recall all the way back to algebra 1 here. You want two numbers that multiply to give you 12, but when you add them together, you're going to get negative 8. So we start with our x in front. So two numbers that multiply to give you 12, but when you add them, give you negative 8. Well, that would be negative 2 and negative 6. A negative times a negative is a positive, and if you add two negatives together, they just continue on being negative. Now comes the part where we find our zeros. So we're going to take each piece and set it equal to 0. So x minus 2 equals 0 and x minus 6 equals 0, and then simply solve for x. 
So x is equal to 6, and x is equal to 2. We now have our two zeros. Let's try this next one. So we have our 3x squared plus 12x, and we're going to set that equal to 0 because we're trying to find the zeros. And for this one, we don't have a trinomial, but we do have a common set of factors that we can take out. So we can factor out a 3x, because 3x is our greatest common factor, which leaves us with x and then plus 4. So we have two sets of terms, so a monomial and a binomial, that are being multiplied to each other. So let's set each part equal to 0. So 3x equals 0, and then our x plus 4 equals 0. So x equals negative 4, or x equals 0. All right, so now let's look at that baseball, basketball, or soccer ball piece. All right, so any object that is thrown or launched into the air, such as a baseball, basketball, or soccer ball, is a projectile. The general function that approximates the height h in feet of a projectile on Earth after t seconds is given below. So, we have negative 16t squared plus b at 0 times d plus our height is going to give us what we are looking for. So, our negative 16 relates to the constant due to Earth's gravity in feet per second. Our v talks about our initial velocity, or vertical velocity in this case, in feet per second. And our h equals our initial height in feet. So, note that this model has limitations. It does not account for air resistance, wind, or other real-world factors. So it's a very basic function that does take into account gravity, vertical velocity, and its initial height of any object. Let's put this formula to good use. So a sports application. A soccer ball is kicked from ground level with an initial velo vertical velocity of 32 feet per second. How many feet, or how, and how, after how many seconds, sorry, will the ball hit the ground? So let's start with that formula that we needed. So we have our height in, relates, in relation to time equals negative 16 t squared plus, well, we know our vertical velocity is 32 feet per second, so we have 32. And you're kicking it from the ground, so therefore your initial height or your original height is 0, so plus 0. And now we can factor. So we can factor out a common term here. So we have negative 16t, which leaves us with t minus 2. And we're, let's set this equal to 0. So we need negative 16t. So negative 16t equals 0, which would mean t has to equal 0. And then we have t minus 2 has to equal 0 using that zero product property in case you've forgotten, and that equals 2. So the ball will hit the ground in 2 seconds. Special products and factors. So we have a difference of two squares and a perfect square trinomial. When you have special products and factors, if you use the difference of two squares and perfect square trinomials, it's going to be much faster when you're trying to factor. So I may add these into your notes. We have covered them in Algebra 1, but in case you've forgotten, since that's been a while, I might make sure you write these down. So let's start. So we have finding roots by using special factors. So we have 9x squared equals 1. So we're going to set this so that that way our 1 is on the same side of the equation as our 9x squared. And since we can, re we can rewrite it in standard form, I already did that, and then let's write the left side as a squared minus b squared. So we have 3x squared minus 
1 squared. So, well, now we can simply write it as a factor since both of them are perfect squares. We have 3x plus 1, and we have 3x minus 1. We re quickly recall back, difference of two squares. Each piece is squared. It's a difference of two squares. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, but they're almost going to look identical. So one's positive, one's negative, and they almost look identical. So now we can simply solve for x. So we have 3x plus 1 has to equal 0, which means x is 1 third. And we have 3x minus 1 has to equal 0. And that would end up being x equals positive 1 third. This one's negative when you subtract the 1. All right, so let's try one that is a perfect square trinomial. So let's rewrite. So we have 8x squared minus 40x plus 50 equals 0. Keep in mind you should always try to move everything to the same side as your highest power. So therefore, instead of having negative 8x squared and negative 50, you just have a negative 40x because you moved the 40 over and then just swapped it out. All right, so let's start by factoring out a 2, which leaves us with 4x squared minus 20x plus 25, and we're still equaling 0 here. All right, so now if we pay attention to what's inside parentheses, we have a perfect square trinomial. So therefore, we can rewrite this as 2x minus 5 squared, and it's minus here because our middle term is being subtracted. And now we say, hey, well, this has to equal 0. Well, it's the same exact thing two times. So we only have to do this once. 2x minus 5 has to equal 0. So therefore, x has to equal 5 halves. If you did the entire piece again, it's the same exact equation, and you'd still end up with 5 halves. So there is only one 0 in this case. Let's try working backwards now. So using zeros to write function rules. Write a quadratic function in standard form with zeros 2 and negative 1. So if we recall back, when we're trying to find our zeros, we generally start with something. So we had 2x minus 5 in the previous, and we set that equal to 0. Whatever our x was, that's what gave us 0. Well, now you're being given x. What do you have to add or subtract to that x value to make it 0? So in this case, we have an x that is 2 and 1 that is negative 1. So we need to write the binomial that gave us 2 as a response. So 2 is our x value. So we have x minus 2 because 2 minus 2 would give us 0. And then for this one, we would have, uh, since our x value is negative 1, we'd have to add 1 to make that 0. So now we have x minus 2 times x plus 1, and we need to write this in standard form. So we're simply going to distribute. And when we distribute, we end up with x squared, because we're going to distribute this x to each piece, plus x, and then we'll distribute our second part. So minus 2x, and then minus 2. So now we need to combine like terms. So we have x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. And now replace the f of x, or 0 with f of x. So we have f of x equals x squared minus x minus 2. 
and it is now